my word. So we've got a rare category one storm going through. So we're seeing many impacts from this, and we just heard a number. Uh, the latest just jumped 60, to 60, around 60,000. 60,000 customers in the dark because of this severe weather. We're actually starting to see some dangerous conditions in various parts of West Michigan. This is downtown Grand Rapids where we're hearing sirens outside yeah. of the station as we speak. Anytime you see a green tinge sky in Michigan, you know that there's tornadoes brewing. Hey guys, and welcome back to the WT Farm Girl channel, where we are building our first ever dream house. It is gonna be exciting, it is gonna be epic, and you definitely are gonna to wanna to subscribe and join on in on this build. This video, we are getting our first load of wood delivered. And let me tell you, we're off to a rolling start with things not going well. Between bad wood, crazy deliveries, and big mess ups on our house, let's just say we're in for a wild summer. Let's go. Their first official load of actual wood. <laughs> All right, <laughs> there it is. Well, it looks like someone was snacking on it. They get it from beaver forest. <laughs> so you paid extra money for yeah, this the lumber this story. Is this is supposed this to be the premium. More per floor. All right, so you guys are gonna have to put your thoughts down below on um, what you think about this and what your experience has been. We don't order lumber very often at all, so this kind of took us by surprise. It's right here. Now all of this looks good, and I think this is all that we ordered. However, if we come over here, the story is a lot different. We have a whole slew of two by sixes. These are to frame our back wall of our basements, and these are not exactly what I would call usable. Most of them look like they are the reject boards. This one's got a giant knot in it. So at first Eric was just going to take the two by sixes, return them all back to the store, and get some different ones from Menards or Home Depot because they're cheaper. But there was a bigger problem than that and that was a pretty big problem. So we have a stack of two by four boards right here. We didn't order two by four boards and we had actually prepaid for this entire delivery. So we have a stack of two by four boards that we didn't pay for or order. And here's some more right here. But the big items that we needed were the sheeting. We ordered wall sheeting to go on the wall and we paid for it. But it's nowhere to be found and it was supposed to be in this delivery. So straight off the bat, we we're already having issues with this house build. And at this rate, we're gonna be really fighting to get it done in the two year time frame. I know a lot of people are like, oh, easy peasy. Then in today's day and age, it's really hard to get people to do a job correctly. And even if you are doing a job correctly with building materials, it can be tough. So let me know if you've had this problem down below and what your experiences were. All right, so we had a pop-up monsoon where we got an inch and a half of rain that just demolished down. Unfortunately, we've got clay, so stuff isn't eroding away too well. But unfortunately, we had our lumber delivered right beforehand. And uh, I put it all down there in the covered area, thinking that it would be safe. Again, not knowing it was going to be a monsoon. And there's water in there. There's water all over here. The door that we had in there, that's soaking wet. Boxes of nails that are expensive are annihilated. And the insulation that I had stuck in there, thinking again that it would probably be okay, that's soaking wet too. And to make matters worse, the wood that got delivered is in such bad shape because it wasn't cut well that I don't even know if we're gonna be able to start this wall this weekend. Because it's all gotta go back. It's really bad. Well, you've got a load of roof trusses being delivered today. I thought it was going to be wood, so hopefully Eric's okay with this location. Because <laughs> uh, I don't know where to put a lot of this stuff. I mean, fortunately we have 
space, but yes, these are big boys. Man, look at these suckers. Oh, here we go. Oh man, this one's a lot slower than the other truck. So I was looking at these uh, trusses, roof trusses, and they've got the overhang on each side. I was trying to figure out what was up with the different lengths, but the different length is actually the two foot overhang. Actually, one's supposed to be two foot and the other's supposed to be three foot. So this one's probably three foot. Nope. Oh my gosh. Oh. Ooh. That's a little rough. Yeah, well, at least it's in sand. Probably was the best spot to put it. So we've got a bad delivery of wood. We have trusses that were delivered too early. All right here, these were just dropped off two days ago, three days ago, and it looks like they might possibly already be warping. All right here, it looks like they might be bowing, but it could just be because of the ties on there. Yeah, there's not much to be done on that. Uh, we had those over there. I don't think those are gonna warp. I think those will be fine. Again, these were all dropped off too early because our builder can't start for another two weeks. I do have to say though, guys, I do have to say, the concrete guys and the excavators and the plumber did a bang out job getting all of their stuff done. Those guys have jobs all over the state and yet they're able to meticulously manage their workflow. It's just, it's mind boggling how on top of things they actually were to be able to schedule to come out and to stay with the project and you don't have to call them 500 times to fix stuff. I mean, they knew the weather, they knew the timing, they had people out here, boom, 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 boom. They got it done. And that's what you really want with your contractors is they can come out, they know what they need to do, they know how to organize their workflow, they know how to coordinate with other people and they get it done. And I mean, really, I, I don't have any complaints at all about the work. I mean, it seems good as far as I can tell. Uh, the only thing I'm noticing is that we have a little bit of a sinkhole going on right here in front of our porch. <laughs> can turn it into a burglar trap. <laughs> Come up to the door to knock on the door and you just fall into a pit. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking right here. I'm not sure why it was right here. Maybe I just didn't get it compacted enough. I know it's got drainage running around the foundation at this particular point. I don't know. I mean, they're going to come out and do the final grade anyway, but I'll just have to keep tabs on this to make sure. I mean, I, I don't think it will go down like 20 feet into the ground. What would you do? That's very interesting. Oh, it definitely got further than I thought it was going to do. Alright, so we've got the, uh, the plywood, or particle board, whatever you want to call it. And then we've got some 2 by 6s And this is all we can fit on the trailer. So we're going to have to make another... Safely. Safely. Yes, yeah, so this is a, our neighbor's trailer. And he was kind enough to let us use it, so... Um, definitely grateful for that. All right, so here's our next load of wood out on the trailer. Just uh, barely managed to get it to fit. So we also got some tarps, so we can finally go through and tarp all of our trusses, which we would have done earlier, but had all these crazy rainstorms come through right after everything got delivered, so. Yep, so this is what we have. We were planning to put the basement together. Uh, but we had a blown tire on the trailer right when we got to Menards. I need a picture of that. And it was the entire afternoon just to get the tire fixed. So sadly, even though today was the perfect day to be able to build and get our first wall on because it was nice and cool, it was a no-go. I mean, between that and, and the failed wood delivery, which even the delivery on Friday that we got, or Thursday, whichever day it was, still didn't deliver the wood we needed. So we still would have had to go <laughs> to the store to get it. So just can't win with wood right now. All right, so hopefully this load isn't too heavy for the New Holland. The last load we did, the tractor could not carry it. <laughs> it was tipping off the back. So we had a, and that was uh, some plywood sheeting. Wood on the back end. You want me to go it off? Oh, he's got it. All right, so we got it. He wants to get, he wanted to get some things stapled together. He wants these nailed together to make them bigger. 
beefier. That was definitely a lot better than trying to lift that plywood. Oh man, that stuff was heavy even just to carry one sheet at a time. So this is gonna go down by the basement tomorrow when it's a little bit drier. Still just a little bit wet down there with all the clay. So we gotta wait for it to dry up. Tomorrow will be the only day because after that it's gonna rain. Just battling lots and lots of rain. All right, I don't have my normal camera. I've got my GoPro with me right now, so. That's gonna be hard to get them. Because the board board's up not to. gonna sit flat on there. Yeah. I don't know. It looks like they took their thumb and like. Yeah, I think they did. Because they're trying to mush like, it down into like here. A chunk right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not gonna sit. It's not gonna sit good. Yeah, with that's those on that's there. not gonna be very productive See at all. That there? Right. Yeah. So is that going on the bottom on the cement then? And those brackets are gonna be able to wrap around that. Now, would you call those little tags, would you call that hurricane bracing? Um, or hurricane? Anchoring straps. Just anchoring straps. I mean, honestly, I think I'd rather have the lag bolts. No, a lot of times they put a bolt up through there. Oh yeah, yeah, for post frame stuff, don't they? But then you gotta mark your boards and... Yeah. So if you look on this board, you see it dipping. Now if you flip it, you see the crown. And you always wanna do crown up. You want all the crowns going the same direction. Otherwise, you're gonna have a wall that's going like this. So we definitely took a risk by starting the build before our builder could get here. We were getting antsy, we didn't want to wait too long to get this thing rolling, and well, it gave us something to do. But unfortunately this also shows one of the reasons that you have to be so careful when building your own house. We didn't take into account the top and bottom plate of this wall. Everything was three inches too tall. So, we had to take the wall back down again and recut all the boards. Definitely not something you want to have to do, but it happens from time to time. And I'm just thankful that we did it on a small wall and not a big wall. And yes, it definitely makes a difference. So you have to make sure that you calculate everything out correctly. Honestly, from this one, it looks pretty good. So. We are going to lift this wall up with the tractor and then connect it into place. We're going to screw it into the wood right there and then we're going to lag bolt it into the cement right there and fasten the straps over so it's extra secure. And then Eric's going to go through and put the angle boards that help support the wall on either end. And then we'll be done for the night. And we'll have our first wall up on our basement.
Well, don't dig it down into the clay. Because this is sand for the driveway. What are you looking for, Daddy? What are you looking for? All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, <laughs> It's definitely going to be an interesting project. It's going to be one of those patience projects. Uh, if you guys have any tips or hints, please drop them down below. And stay tuned for the next video next week where we go through and attempt to build the big wall on the back of our basements. Hopefully, that will go better. But it could go catastrophically wrong. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Love you.